you poor people who decided to tune into this. I'm Ya Boy, and today we're going to be celebrating Black History Month with a person and event that relate to the topic. To start with, a summary of a black singer named Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday was a famous jazz singer who had a large influence on that type of music during her lifetime. She was born on April 7, 1915 in Philadelphia, PA, to a teenage woman named Sadie. She ended up changing her birth name, which was Eleanora Fagan, to Billie Holiday sometime around 1930 when she started singing in clubs. It was around this time that Holiday was discovered by a producer named John Hammond. Hammond was instrumental in getting Holiday started with recording work. From there, Holiday went on to perform with many other jazz artists, including Benny Goodman and Teddy Wilson. She eventually befriended an orchestra saxophonist named Lester Young, who would give her her famous nickname, Lady Day. The same year that her nickname was introduced, she began to tour with Young's orchestra, and the following year would begin to work with another, Artie Shaw's. She became the first colored woman to be a vocalist in an all-white orchestra. She would later leave due to racial frustration. After leaving the orchestra, she would begin to work alone. In 1941, she married a man named James Monroe and unfortunately took up his habit of drugs. She divorced him sometime between 1941 and 1944, but her substance abuse continued, of which escalated after the death of her mother in 1945. Despite the drugs, she would still remain a prominent jazz star until a professional setback in 1947 when she was arrested for the possession of narcotics. She was released the following year, but nearing the end of the 40s was arrested again. This time, she was acquitted of the charges. Despite this, she continued to tour throughout the 50s, completing a majorly successful tour of Europe in 1954. By now, due to continued drug abuse, Holiday's voice was unfortunately at fault. She would still make music until her death, though. She died on July 17, 1959, in New York City due to drug and alcohol-related complications. After her death, she would continue to be well-known in the jazz industry, inspiring many to create and follow in her footsteps. She is still regarded as one of the greatest jazz vocalists of all time and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2000. Two years before Holiday's death, however, was the passing of an act known as the Civil Rights Act of 1957. On September 9, 1957, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed and passed this act with the hopes of solving the problem of civil rights. No actions had been taken towards civil rights since the Reconstruction Era, and this was a major thing for Congress and anybody else involved. Originally proposed by Attorney General Herbert Brownell, the Civil Rights Act of 1957 was purposed to protect voting rights. The act itself did not add any new rights, but instead established a civil rights division in the Department of Justice, the Civil Rights Commission, and the Executive Branch of Congress, and protection of voting rights originally set by the 15th Amendment. At the time of this act's passing, many people were skeptical as to how effective it would be, but the initial idea of it was watered down and still managed to get a point across that the government was indeed trying to fix this mess, even if slowly. The act is what paved the way for future action to be taken on solving civil rights issues such as the Civil Rights Act of 1960 and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In the end, I think we can all agree that America was astoundingly awful in the way it treated its people during these times of hardships. Yet still, we end up cleaning our own messes and fixing our own problems, even if we take over 50 years to actually do it. But anyway, this is Ya Boy, signing off.